since I met you, I've been dancing. <laughs> I used to play cards. Now you're a dancer. Now I'm a dancer. Let me see. I got dance fever. Okay, let me see. Show me a little song. Hey, 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 hey. Shawnee O'Neal is living a blissful life with her husband, Pastor Keon Henderson. But her journey to experiencing her happily ever after has been full of several twists and turns. We intended for this video to be about their love story, since we caused such a ruckus with our recent Red Flag series. However, the details we uncovered about Shawnee's dating history were messier than we anticipated. Buckle up, because this is about to be a very bumpy ride. But before we get into it, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, buffalo ranch popcorn, and green apple licorice. Does the name Davin Baptiste ring a bell? If not, we aren't surprised. He's actually Shawnee's first husband although we can't confirm their wedding date. In the late 90s, Davin worked as the creative director at a company called Design Skills Advertising. On his LinkedIn profile, the Compton, California native shared that he made content for several celebrities and created marketing and collateral material for brands like Nike and Coca-Cola. Meanwhile, the Orlando Magic selected Shaquille O'Neal as the first overall pick in the 1992 NBA draft. After welcoming his daughter to Hero with his longtime girlfriend Arnetta Yardborg in the summer of 1996, Sports Illustrated reported that Orlando media outlets were calling Shaq a bad role model for having a child out of wedlock without any immediate plans to get married. In 1996, Shaq left Orlando and signed a seven-year, $120 million deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. People Magazine reports that that same year Shaq met Shawnee, who was working in LA as a film marketer. Based on that description of her job, it sounds like she was working alongside her then-husband, Davin, but we're unable to confirm that information. However, the timeline provided by People Magazine confirms that Shawnee was still legally married when she first met Shaq. 22-year-old Shawnee gave birth to her son Miles in May 1997. One month after Miles' first birthday, Davin filed for divorce. Now, we ain't ones to gossip, but in divorce docs obtained by RRG, Davin stated he and Shawnee did not have any minor children at the time of the filing, despite Miles being one at the time. So, what does this mean exactly? that up to you to determine. By the spring of 1999, Shawnee was pregnant by Shaq. The blended family settled down in Shaq's home, and in his memoir, which we've linked for you in the description box, Shaq wrote that he accepted Shawnee's son, Miles, as his own. Davin also has a few pictures of Miles on his personal Facebook page, which confirms he has a relationship with him as well, although Miles has adopted Shaq's last name on his social media profiles. Shawnee gave birth to their son Sharif in January 1999, and their second child, Amira, arrived in November 2001. In case you've lost count, this makes four children in total between the two of them, including their children from previous relationships. By 2002, Shawnee was sporting a huge diamond engagement ring, but Shaq told The New Yorker he wasn't quite ready to tie the knot. The writer for the New Yorker article visited Shaq's home and wrote that the NBA star was surrounded by his cousins and old friends from high school who shared his interest in goofing off, breaking stuff, and making loud noises. Shaq, Shawnee, and their children also shared the home with Shaq's chef and close friend, Thomas Gosney. When asked if Shaq was ever going to get around to marrying Shawnee, Thomas said, I think we will, but I think we need to get out of the NBA first. Wait, did he say we? Who is we? <laughs> Thomas added, Before Shawnee came and lived with us, I would say that I was his wife, except for the intimacy. Shaquille has said to me, if you were a girl, I don't know what I would do. While Shaq and Shawnee were growing their family, the press was becoming more and more fixated on the lives of professional athletes and all the women they were impregnating. 
In regards to the number of basketball players that had out-of-wedlock children, one of the NBA's top agents told Sports Illustrated, I'd say that there might be more kids out of wedlock than there are players in the NBA. Paternity suits involving athletes were popping up in courthouses across the U.S., which put the athlete and the league in a negative light. Many basketball players folded under pressure and married their long-suffering girlfriends to avoid public scrutiny, even if they had no intention of being a faithful husband. In December 2002, Shawnee and Shaq got married in a top-secret wedding ceremony. No one was more proud than his mom, Lucille. She told People magazine, Seeing the two of them together and in love is what every mother dreams of for her child. A year later, Shaq's teammate Kobe Bryant had that little incident with a 19-year-old hotel employee in Colorado. While being questioned by the authorities, Kobe told police he could have avoided the situation by doing what Shaq does, which was to pay the woman to keep quiet. Kobe added that Shaq had paid up to $1 million to keep his infidelities under wraps. When the Los Angeles Times printed Kobe's statement, newly married Shaq told People magazine that the reported claims were ridiculous. He added, I never hang out with Kobe, so how this guy can think he knows anything about me or my business is funny. Perhaps Shaq wasn't paying women to keep quiet about his affairs, but was he actually going around and cheating on Shawnee? Absolutely. In his memoir, he stated that when he was younger, girls didn't want him. But when he joined the NBA, all of a sudden, every girl wanted him, and temptation was around every corner. He didn't even have to chase women because they were the ones chasing him. He understood how hard it was to be married to a professional athlete, not only because of the groupies that were throwing themselves at him, but also because he had a tendency to be very moody. Shaq wrote that if he didn't win the championship, he was no fun to be around, and if someone wrote a bad article about him, he would take it out on Shawnee. He wrote, I admit I was a male diva. What can I do to make your pregnancy easier? Everything. Like, give me back rubs and feet rubs. And How about you take the kids every weekend you don't have a game somewhere, like out of the house? I can do that. <laughs> He was so focused on basketball, he never put a lot of energy into being a good husband. Nonetheless, they welcomed a son named Shakir in April 2003. Shaq joined the Miami Heat in 2004, and that's when things in their marriage really started to go downhill. Shawnee said the women in Miami would show up to the games in their undergarments. She also admitted their marriage didn't have a strong enough foundation for Shaq to withstand that type of temptation. She constantly confronted him about all the cheating rumors, and he would either deny it or tell her, you got pictures, video, if not, don't come at me. Their fourth child, Mayara, arrived in May 2006. A little over a year later, Shaq filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. In his divorce filing, he granted Shawnee full custody of their children. The rumor mill was going bananas with allegations that Shawnee was cheating on Shaq with her personal trainer. Reports also stated Shaq accused Shawnee of stashing money and buying gifts and a house for her new boo. A source close to the situation told the YBF that the rumors were untrue and Shaq allegedly fed those lies to the media to cover up his own midlife crisis. The insider added that there was no way Shawnee was cheating with a personal trainer because Shaq was so insecure, he never allowed Shawnee to go to the gym. A month later, Shawnee filed a petition to ask for a three-month continuance in hopes that she and Shaq could repair their marriage. In August 2008, they called off the divorce and officially reconciled. Unfortunately, they still couldn't get their relationship back on track. In November 2009, Shawnee filed for legal separation before filing for divorce. She told People Magazine it wasn't an easy decision. She admitted she had a fear of being alone. But when she finally found the strength to file, it was like a weight was lifted off of her shoulders. She later admitted that she found messages from various women in Shaq's Blackberry. So she drove to where his car was parked at the NBA arena and flattened his tires, busted his windows, and wrote, I cheat on my wife on the hood of his car. In his memoir, Shaq blamed himself for the demise of his marriage. He said he had too many options, and he chose to be with several women outside of his marriage. 
He added, in my mind, I never did it disrespectfully, but obviously I shouldn't have done it at all. With the divorce in motion, Shaq had another issue to deal with. In January 2010, a woman named Vanessa Lopez claimed she was his mistress for five years. During a press conference, Vanessa said she knew Shaq was married, but he told her that he and Shawnee had an open marriage. Things between Shaq and Vanessa came to an end after she had a pregnancy scare. Vanessa said that after breaking things off with him, Shaq kept calling her and allegedly made threats against her. She filed a civil lawsuit against him, and it was eventually thrown out after a judge determined she had lied several times. Shaq and Shawnee reached a divorce agreement in March 2010, and Basketball Wives made its television debut the following month. There were allegations that Shawnee's co-star, Laura Govan, had an affair with Shaq, but Laura denied those allegations. Shaq eventually moved on with Flavor of Love reality star Nikki Hoops Alexander. As for 35-year-old Shawnee, she started dating 23-year-old Marlon Yates. But in 2016, after six years of dating, Shawnee and Marlon went their separate ways. There were rumors that her Basketball Wives co-star Evelyn Lozada hooked up with Marlon at some point, but Evelyn vehemently denied the allegations. Meanwhile, Pastor Keon Henderson got divorced from his wife, Felicia, sometime around 2016. He had no interest in dating anyone and was focused on raising his daughter and preaching the gospel at his Houston church, the Lighthouse Church and Ministries. Keon told Praise Houston Radio that a friend reached out to him and told him that someone was interested in him. That someone turned out to be Shawnee. They started texting, and eventually, while Keon was visiting California for work, he and Shawnee met in the lobby of a hotel and chatted for six hours straight. By February 2020, they were officially an item. After two years of dating, they announced their engagement. Shawnee told People Magazine her children loved him, and he really stepped up and filled a void they had in their lives. Meanwhile, Shaq was still lurking in the shadows. Um, I used to tease him and be like, could you please hurry up and get a wife and then you could stop, you know, randomly FaceTiming me and talking about your day. In May 2022, 47-year-old Shawnee and 41-year-old Keon became husband and wife. That same month, it was announced that they also filmed a reality show centered around their wedding that's set to premiere on VH1. Following their ceremony, Shawnee surprised her new husband with a month-long honeymoon. She told People Magazine she chartered a yacht in Monaco, and they sailed down the coast of France before finishing their trip in Italy. Upon their return to the States, they settled down in a $3.3 million home in Houston. She assumed the role of the first lady of his church, and they've also teamed up for several ventures, including a business webinar. During a May 2022 interview with Mind Blowing Magazine, Shawnee said it felt good to finally have the man she had been dreaming about her whole life. She added, You want your hero, your knight in shining armor guy, to come along and sweep you off your feet, and it took a while to get there. It is a new beginning for me. We're happy that Shawnee is finally receiving the love she deserves, and we wish her and Keon a lifetime of happiness. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below, and thanks for watching RRG.